Do you know the James Webb the Space Telescope? Do you know this really expensive telescope that is in space and is doing amazing science? So I'm going to tell you what we as an astronomers have been enjoying for the last year and a half, which is a total change in the understanding of the galaxy evolution. Because this new telescope, just from the first image, it changed a lot of what we really think about the galaxy evolution. And they cannot do it alone. You need to do some science from the ground. You need to do some complement to those observations from the ground. And that's nice because actually, for some of the targets that we're observing with James Webb, we are also observing them with the Magellan Telescope. So a little bit of context of, oh, what's happening? OK. So where are we? We are here in the north of Chile doing astronomy, trying to observe the sky and try to, to learn where we are in the context of the universe. So this is an amazing video that has been taken in another observatory. So don't, don't, don't mind this, those, teleco those telescopes. This is another observatory here in Chile. But it's really nice because it shows what we can see of the universe. We can see that actually we're just in a rock that is rotating and we are seeing the sky that is just passing through. And we really imagine doing, seeing the sky and you are in the all Greece and trying to understand your, 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 your position in the, in the universe and you see this. So you see stars, you see this white thing that we really, well, now we know what it is, but at the beginning we didn't know what, what, what that was and we have here some galaxies. So we, our beauty is trying to understand where we are based on what we can see from the sky. But now we know that we are just in a planet that is orbiting this star, which is the sun. We are, we are in the solar system. We are just orbiting a fairly normal star, which is the, the, the sun. Actually, it's a very common star. And this star is just orbiting this galaxy. We live inside this galaxy, which is the Milky Way. This is just a video, a simulation of how the, the Milky Way really look. And it's changing the view to actually what we can see on the sky. So this is what we see in the sky. This is what we saw in the sky. And this is just because how do you see a galaxy from the inside? This is what we see. And I do galaxy evolution. Why? Because galaxies are actually one of the most interesting, interesting objects in the universe because most of the interesting processes happen in galaxies. You have the formation of stars, you have supernovas, you have uh, black holes, you have a lot of things happening in galaxies. So it's really interesting to understand what is happening with these galaxies. So here we have the Milky Way, but if you go a little further, you will see that actually, ah, I can, you cannot see my, my pointer. So this is just a picture of how the Milky Way would look with a bunch of small galaxies around it. These are the satellites of the Milky Way. And here we have uh, Andromeda, which is another galaxy that is nearby. Have you seen Andromeda? You can only see it from the, see it from the northern sky. You cannot see it from the south, which is a pity. So if you just look to the nearest galaxies, you see two spiral galaxies and a bunch of small galaxies. And if you go a little further, you will see that actually we have different types of galaxies. We have the elliptical galaxies, the spiral galaxies, the irregular galaxies. They have different colors, different sizes, different shapes. And what we really want to understand is why they look the way that they do. Why is this galaxy or, uh, orange or kind of red? Why do we have this star formation happening in this galaxy? How do, we, how do these galaxies come to be? That's actually what we do in galaxy evolution. And how do they evolve? Do these galaxies just appear and they, are, they, they don't change or they change a lot? That's the question. And to do that, to understand the galaxy evolution, the only way to do it is to look into the past. Because you, we cannot, the Milky Way, we will never see how the Milky Way looked uh, five, year, five giga years ago. It's impossible because we only see it now. So in order to understand galaxy evolution, you need to look to distant galaxies because of the speed of the light, when you look at these some galaxies, you are seeing the past, how the universe looked when it was half its current age, for example. So if you look into the past, you look at the distant galaxies and you can learn about the different paths to form galaxies, for example. And the common picture that we have, the, the understanding of how these galaxies came to be, is that actually 
a galaxy like the Milky Way, which is a spiral galaxy, it was very likely formed by the combination of smaller galaxies. So at the beginning of the universe, we have these small dwarf galaxies and they start merging together until they become something like the Milky Way. This is kind of the, 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 the main framework for galaxy evolution. We know that galaxies merge together, they accrete more material and they become something like the, the Milky Way. And then it could happen that this Milky Way could, could crash with the Andromeda and it would form an elliptical galaxy, for example. So this is our, our understanding of the, of the galaxy evolution. But I want to, to mention something about studying distant galaxies. So you know that the universe is expanding, right? We live in a universe that is expanding. And the galaxies, they are, they are farther away. They appear as they are moving faster from us. And this produces something that is called redshift. So here we are looking at this galaxy that is moving from us because the universe is expanding. But the light is going to shift into the red. The light from this galaxy is going to appear redder and redder and redder because of the universe that is expanding. This is very similar to what happens with the Doppler effects. You, you have the change in pitch for a given sound when it's moving with respect to us. The same is happening with the light. And this is important because if you want to study distant galaxies, actually the light from these galaxies is going to move to the infrared. So very distant galaxies, they are bright in the infrared and they don't appear in the optical bands. So actually, if I just go outside and look with a large telescope and I look in the optical wavelengths, I'm not going to see the farther galaxies because they already moved to the infrared. They are hidden from the, from the ground. And that's why we have telescopes in space because you, you can do these kind of observations from space. And this is where these telescopes came, uh, is important because this telescope was designed to look into, into the infrared. And just as an example here, this is the pillars of creation. Have you seen this image, this beautiful image from HST? So you can see a lot of dust and a lot of the creation of new stars embedded in the, in the dust clouds. But if you look to the same uh, region with the James Webb, you start to, free, to see through the, through the clouds, to the dust, because the infrared is able to, to pierce the, the clouds. And this is just the same that happens here. Here we have the optical light, and in the infrared, we can see, for example, the lights that they are hidden behind the, the back. So this is what the James Webb Telescope is doing. And actually, what is really important, besides the wavelength, the colors that the, the, the James Webb is observing, is also this is a large telescope in space. Imagine that you have a Magellan Telescope in space. And that's also why it was so expensive to, to launch it, because you need to, to build this telescope, fold it, and then launch it, and then unfold it. And what is amazing is that it's really larger than the, than the Hubble uh, Space Telescope. So you really have more power to detect galaxies. And also you have the, the wavelength range to detect the distant galaxies. But the issue, not, not an issue, but the, the understanding that we had before the launching of the James Webb is that Hubble already revealed a lot of distant galaxies. And our understanding of the universe was telling us that actually James Webb was going to detect only a few more distant galaxies because we really thought that we have detected everything. This is just what happens in science. You, you think that you reach the limit and then a new instrument comes and breaks everything. So really, this is an old cartoon for these discoveries. And J uh, James Webb was supposed to only push the arrow a little bit to the right. And here to the right, we have the how far we're observing in the, in the past. So here we have a billion years after the Big Bang, and here we have redshift. Redshift is just an estimate of how much the light is moving to the red. So redshift one is at a given distance, redshift eight is way more farther than, than redshift one. So this is just a measurement that we use to estimate how far a galaxy is, because it's related to how far we're seeing and how old was the universe when, when we're seeing that light. So, now, I'm going to talk a little about two really important new discoveries that James Webb has revealed in the first half and a year, year, year and a half. So the first thing is that this telescope has discovered too many bright galaxies and massive galaxies. And this is an issue, an issue, because our, our models were wrong. And it's a nice issue because now we need to learn a lot about galaxy evolution to understand what is happening with these new galaxies. So, I don't know if you have seen this image, 
this is the first image that was revealed by the Biden president, the president Biden. This is the Biden image, some people call it. The Biden image, and it's a galaxy cluster that actually from this image, people already found really distant galaxies and very massive galaxies and really bright galaxies. And that was not as we expected, which is cool. We have a lot of galaxies that we can observe and we have a lot of physics that we need to learn. So the first discovery just from the first image is that we have too many bright galaxies at the beginning of the universe. How do we explain that? That's a good question. So here is just, it's a plot, it's a, from a paper, so excuse me, it's, it's not really nice for a presentation, but I think that it makes my point that here we have a redshift, which is how far a galaxy is. And here is a, a magnitude in the UV, which means how bright it really is. So the black points are all the galaxies that have been detected by HST. And in the first year, James Webb detected all the red points. So it pushed the limit a lot and into the fainter uh, range also. But we also have these candidates that are really bright and really far, and we really have no model to explain those galaxies. So this is just to show you that James Webb is really pushing the limit into the, the distant universe. And this is an issue because actually we thought that we really understood. So this is a nice plot because the blue line showed what we really thought was happening in the universe. So if you go further, you are going to detect smaller galaxies and fewer new stars, for example. And these are the points that James Webb is, is providing. We have a lot more galaxies and a lot more activity than we really expected. And now recently I was in a conference in Tokyo that we spent a day just discussing new ideas to explain these points. So maybe we have new stars. Actually, I've read papers proposing that we have these weird stars that they are created with dark matter or they don't shine. And at some point they're so bright that that's why we're, we're pushing all these, these, these points to the, to, to, to the top. We could have uh, different star formation efficiency for these galaxies. We have different populations of stars. So we really need to change all the models about galaxy evolution to explain these points. And this is cool because now all the theoreticians, they are trying to explain uh, what James Webb have revealed in these first years. And, all, and also we have another issue is that not only the distant galaxies ha we have seen too many and too bright, but galaxies that are, they are closer to us, they also appear too massive and there are too many. And actually, these are three galaxies that I have read a lot in the, in the proposal for the James Webb because they call these galaxies the uni universe breaking galaxies because the universe is too small to have these galaxies. We shouldn't be seeing these galaxies because they are too massive. You cannot get, too ma you cannot get enough matter with, in fact, inside a volume to create these galaxies. So people are just trying to understand, are, are these galaxies really massive or, or we don't know how to, to weight this mass, these galaxies? That's a possibility. And actually, we just discussed a proposal to follow up this galaxy. So this is just what is really happening. These are really massive galaxies that we don't understand and we're pushing the limit to, to do so. So we have too many galaxies, too massive and too bright. Now, I'm going to talk about something new that also James Webb discovered. So have you heard about the supermassive black holes and about the active supermassive black holes? Yes? Good. So apparently there are way more active supermassive black holes in the early universe than we really expected. And this is something that I can show you in this picture. So James Webb discovered these sources, these little red dots. So if you could think that actually these are just red stars, but actually they measure the distance and they're really far. They are galaxies that are really far from, from us. And what is really happening here is, is that we're seeing the emission of black holes. So black holes, they can accrete material and they can, they can shine just like in the picture in the, in the movie. Uh, but we can have these black holes, the supermassive black holes. These are the, the, the really big black holes that we have in the center of galaxies. So I don't know if you have, you have seen this, these pictures, right? Okay, these are two real images of the supermassive black hole in the center of the Milky Way and in the center of the galaxy M87. These are two real pictures 
of the material that is being accreted into a supermassive black hole. So these are just two real images of, of black holes. The black hole is, in the, is the thing in the, in the middle, the black hole. But this is the material that is being accreted into these black holes. And we can already see in the local universe, in the Milky Way, if you can go, where is the center of the, the, the Milky Way? You can go and see this supermassive black hole. But in the early universe, we can have this supermassive black hole accreting a lot of material, and that's going to hit the material, and it's going to produce something that is so luminous that actually can outshine a galaxy. So if a supernova is something really bright, this is a million times a supernova. And we can see these objects really far into the past, very, really distant. So what James Webb is revealing is that actually galaxies, they have a lot of a lot of these uh, active uh, supermassive black holes. And actually, they appear to be obscured by dust, and that's why they are appearing as these little red dots. And apparently, a lot of more galaxies have these kind of objects in the centers, and that's going to change how we understand galaxies. For example, I do galaxy evolution. I know that most of the galaxies have these objects in the center, but I know I have colleagues that they work only on these objects, and they only think of the galaxies something is around the black hole, because these objects are so massive and so powerful that actually they can just drive the evolution of galaxies. And we, now we understand that this is happening in the high redshift universe, in the distant universe, and we really need to take into account. But now I'm going to talk about a new window that James Webb is bringing to us, which is to trade the gas in the early universe. And so you already described how, what is spectroscopy is is that you can actually you can have the sunlight and you can disperse it in three different colors and you get more information about the process if you take the spectrum of 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 the of the light instead of only taking an image and actually you have heard this an image is worth one one thousand words and a spectrum is worth one thousand images so that's, that's, the, that's what we say in astronomy, because at the end, you have different images and different colors. But typically, to get the spectrum, you need to put a slit over a star or a galaxy to get the spectrum. So that's the complication. But now, we have these new instruments, which are the integral field units, that actually, they measure spectrums in different positions of an image. So instead of using a slit, you get a spectrum all over the galaxy. These are new instruments. They, done, they, can, they can obtain a spectra in different positions of the sky. It's like taking an image and getting all the colors of that image at the same time. Actually, these are cubes. Because if you collapse all the wavelengths, all the colors, you get the white light and you get the image. But actually, you can go and get the image associated to the yellow, to the red, and to the everything. And actually, you will see that in some at some colors, you see the emission from different gases, and you can see that the galaxy is rotating. Did you see that? You will see that actually you can see the gas that is moving at different velocities because, because with the spectroscopy, you can trace the different velocities here. And actually, with this instrument, we can trace the gas around these galaxies. And this is really important. Ah, okay, something I wanted to say. These new instruments, they are really complex. So this is a picture of, a, of an IFU that is in a telescope here in the ground. They are really massive. They are really difficult to build. And now we will have one in space, in the James Webb. And this is, these are just what we can see with this IFU. This is a really distant galaxy, and this, we have the emission of gas and different colors and different velocities. So now we can really understand what is the gas, what is the gas doing around, around these galaxies. And why this is important? Because I always like to say that galaxy evolution is only the balance between the accretion of gas and the expulsion of gas in galaxies. Because to form new stars, you need to accrete gas. This is the fuel for star formation. So you're going to accrete gas, you're going to form new stars, and they're going to explode as supernova. And those supernova are going to expel the gas. And at the end, galaxy evolution is understanding this balance. So if you have a lot of gas, then you are going to have a lot of star formation. And then that star formation is going to maybe destroy the galaxy because of all these different explosions. So understanding the balance between the gas accretion and expulsion is really important to understand the galaxy evolution. 
And this is what we are trying to do with Polo and these distant, distant galaxies, trying to understand what is happening with the gas around these galaxies. And this is the object that we are going to observe with James Webb in two months, actually. This is a pair of galaxies at redshift 4.5, just so you have an idea of how, how far they are. And we discovered a nebula of hydrogen around this pair of galaxies. But we also discovered some extended gas. This is carbon that we detected. So we have two galaxies, and we have this nebula of gas. We really want to now understand, is this gas that is falling into the galaxies and is fueling star formation? And actually, we are seeing the gas that is being expelled. So this is why we got time with James Webb to actually to reveal what's really happening here. And we received the first images uh, three weeks ago. And now I'm kind of disappointed because of the nice picture that you showed. And this is actually what we use. <laughs> These are just, this is, a, this is the main galaxy that we are studying, and this is the other galaxy. And, <laughs> uh, and we detected this new cloud that we really don't, don't know what it is. We are trying to, to understand what is happening. We have this new yellow thing that is in the middle. We don't know what is happening. But now, for example, we have a contour part to the, to the extended carbon emission. So this is just the preview of what we will get in a couple of months. Because in order to get the, to do the observations, they need to do these images first, and then they're going to put the, the spectrographers uh, over the, the image. So this is what we got three weeks ago, and we are working to, to, to get the new IFU observation for these galaxies. True colors in the sense that the red is the reddest filter that we are using. Yeah, here the blue is already in the infrared. Yeah, we, can, we cannot see this galaxy with the, with the naked eye. These are just shifted into the infrared. And also, we have another project. <laughs> we have another project that actually we're going to do an IFU observations of this galaxy this really long galaxy. And what is happening here is that this is a galaxy that is being gravitationally lensed by a galaxy cluster. So the mass is bending in space, and it actually is stretching the galaxy. That's why it's so extended. And we discovered, uh, again, a cloud of hydrogen around these galaxies. And we now, with James Webb, we're going to understand what's really happening in this galaxy. And I would like to, to show that picture, because this is the logo for a survey, and the survey is Megasaura. And actually, Megasaura is the Magellan Evolution of Galaxies Spectroscopic and Ultraviolet Reference Atlas. It's a long name. But it's important to make the connection, because Megasaura was observing this galaxy five years ago. So this observation with James Webb were based on the observation that they took with the Magellan telescopes. But this is, this is what I want to show, that we are really doing cutting-edge science but we need to do with previous observations done, done maybe with the Magellan's and the other telescope. And I want to show you, this is the part that I make the, about the new instrument that we're going to have in the Magellan, with the Magellan. So there are some things that we cannot do from space. We can only do it from the ground. And this is an IFU that is already available in the Magellan. This is IFU-M, and it's already able to get different spectra at different positions with different configurations. So it, it has the field of view of Jupiter, for example. It can go as small as, as Mercury. So this is one that is already available. But actually, there is a, a second one that is called JAMAS that is going to arrive soon. Hopefully, yeah. they are building it. <laughs> Hopefully. And now we're going to have two a few instruments to do science from the Magellan. So this is what I do. If I really want to understand the gas around galaxies, these instruments are going to be key for, for the science that I do. And here I have a table that is in, the, in one of the documents for JAMAS that actually there are not many IFU instruments in the world. So the most famous is MUSE, that is in Paranal. The another, was, another one is KCWI, that is in Keck. But I was using these instruments in January, and it's not as good as Muse, actually. It's not so good. And now we will have IFUM and JAMAS here in the Magellan. And hopefully, they're going to behave better than PCWI. And the last slide that I have 
is just to show you, again, this is the pair of galaxies that we are going to observe with James Webb. And this is the profile of the emission of hydrogen. This is the Lyman alpha emission line. And I want to show you that this is the data that we had last year. And this is the data that we took three weeks ago with the Magellan. Because we really needed high spectral resolution. Because we really want to, to, to understand if this is maybe it's a complex, li complex line, or these are just three lines that they are just happen to be together. And now we have a better data that we, 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 we made this plot yesterday because it's really new data. But we're already seeing that actually there are more separation between the profiles of the lines. And actually, maybe this is going to be key to understand this extended hydrogen gas around the galaxy. And we did it with the Magellan, with, with the MAGE instrument. So this is cool. So that's hopefully we're going to have an IFU and a good spectrograph with the GMT in the future. Imagine what we will do with an IFU on top of this of this telescope. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be uh, really a good complement to James Webb. Thanks. <laughs>